The Ferraris of the 1960s are the epitome of classic Italian sports cars. All front engine Colombo V12 machines, a beautifully engineered power plant that catapults the car along the road, while at the same time, they have a spacious interior that envelops the driver in luxury. It was a time of large and dominating cars, and the Ferrari 330 GT 2 Plus 2 quickly caught the attention of the motoring world when it was unveiled at the 1964 Brussels Motor Show. The 330 was large enough to carry four passengers plus luggage while at the same time producing 300 horsepower, launching the car to 150 miles an hour. There were two different variations of the 332 plus two built. And while they have the same basic shape to them and design overall, they're very noticeable differences. So the series one cars, the first cars that came out had a four headlight configuration and they were side by side on each side. And while they look really cool in my opinion, some people believed it disrupted the lines of the car and just was not the, most attractive, so Ferrari quickly switched to the two headlight configuration in their Series 2 cars that you see here. And while the 250 series brought the Ferrari name, you know, some real notoriety, the 330 is still a luxurious and powerful grand touring car that should not be underestimated. And if you think about it back then, so they built just under 1,100 of the 330s, which for Ferrari at the time was a record. I mean, nowadays you think about it and you're like, that's not that many cars, just over a thousand. But back in those days, Ferrari was not mass producing cars. So building almost 1100 cars was a serious accomplishment for them. And because there were so many built, they were more affordable. So throughout the years, the 330s became the perfect donor car for a lot of replicas that were built. So 250 GTEs and 332 plus twos were kind of the two main go-to cars as donors. Uh, and people would use them to build 250 GTOs, SWBs, cars like that. Which means that a lot of these cars kind of dwindled down over the years. Not sure exactly how many are left, uh, but they're definitely still a car that is on the spectrum of classic Enzo era Ferraris on the more affordable end while still giving you all the power, performance, luxury, and comfort of a front engine V12 Ferrari. While the 250 name brought a lot of notoriety to Ferrari, not so much for their 250 GTE, which is kind of the, the predecessor to this car, uh, but for cars like the 250 GTO and other just iconic models. Uh, but the 330s should not be underestimated because the 250, so back then the naming system of Ferraris, 250 meant 250 cc's per cylinder times 12 cylinders, and you end up with three liters. The 330s are 330 cc per cylinder, which leaves you with a four liter engine. So it's more powerful, but with the same luxurious design as the 250 series. So they, I, I really think that they're a bit underestimated because uh, they're just so comfortable to drive, especially these Grand Tours. They're so comfortable, there's lots of room, and they give you all the power in the world that you want from a 60s car. Uh, nowadays, of course, 300 horsepower. I think it's just under 300, it's like 295 or 96, something right around there. Uh, but Nowadays, you get, you know, 1,000 horsepower cars, 1,500 horsepower hypercars, which is crazy, and you're never actually going to use that much power, or at least not like the normal person never would. Uh, but for this car back then, 300 horse was incredible, and it still really is. When you drive this, you don't feel like you're lacking power at all. So I really appreciate the 330s for their performance and luxury. The 330, the interior of this car, is everything you could ask for in a luxury car. It just surrounds you in leather and wood and it's comfortable. And so when you look at the car, the dash, the center console, the seats, the door panels, they're all leather. And then every the whole dash is wood. And it's one big piece of wood. Even the glove box is a cutout 
and so it's a wood glove box too with just holes in the wood for the various vents and gauges and I I really like how simplistic old cars are with everything right around the driver uh, even you know the e-brakes down here everything's just right within reach and uncomplicated and you know I, I love old cars for the simplicity uh, but timelessness of their design and plus a lot of new cars nowadays you feel like there's a lot of plastic bits and in this car what's not leather and wood is almost all metal there's a couple bits like the little winglet um, door or the window uh, knob but it feels like a sturdy plastic whereas you know some cars I feel like they're just gonna break off especially seeing as this car is so old it's still the plastic is still held up over time the very few pieces of plastic so it wasn't cheaply made uh, and another thing I really like is the old classy wooden steering wheels I think that they are just this timeless piece that adds that extra little bit of elegance to the car now I mean you know on like a 308 or something it might look a little silly with a wooden steering wheel but on this car I just I think it is the perfect 60s touch a lot of Ferraris they're known for the batteries draining and you got to keep them on a trickle charger and this one does not have that issue this one you just start the car and it springs to life it has not died on me at all even if I haven't driven it for a couple of days I can still get in this car turn the key and it fires right up and if you've owned Ferraris you know that that's that's not always the case I mean there are plenty of Ferraris that do that but like not not always definitely not always so that's always a big plus in my book uh, and then another interesting thing about the older Ferraris so Ferraris are very known for the gated shift the dog leg gated shift you know with that pattern and the older ones did not have that so like this one it's not dog leg and it's not gated and all the old ones all the old ferraris were like that the lusos even even like the the later not later but you know even up to like the 365 gtc4 and lots of models like that were not gated shift so what ferrari is so iconic for now has not always been that way uh reverse on this car instead of like the new ones um they're well the new the newer than this ones that are still manual uh reverse you go to the left and you have to press down and up for reverse but this one is first gear second gear and then reverse is to the right and down so very different from the normal you know what everyone kind of recognizes as the ferrari like shift pattern nowadays so I, I've always, I don't mind like not gated shift, but you know, there's something about clinking through the gears. But then again, these older cars, A, they never had that and B, you know, a traditional shift like this is like, it matches with the classiness of this car. It's just a very classy kind of like the wooden steering wheel and the wooden dash and the traditional shift with the leather wrapped around it and the leather everywhere i mean it's you know it's classy it, it, it's a throw you know it's a 60s car so it's a 60s feel to it which suits it perfectly and these cars they're bigger but they have the 12 cylinder engine so they don't lack power in the least so you know the bigness doesn't slow it down it just makes it feel like a really fast cruiser a really luxurious fast but comfortable kind of car the seats are comfy they're pretty big so you know I'm not a big person but like they're they're nice and big and comfy and they they don't wrap you too much but they're not flat to where you know you're sitting like again something flat they have that perfect little wrap around like the tiniest bit it's just it's so comfortable it's so comfortable I love it you know and I love that this still has the old radio and everything that just gives it that classic feel to it there's not much like it you know you can 
You can drive new cars in, in luxury, which are great, but driving an older luxury car is just phenomenal. It's, it's uncompared to anything else. 332 plus two was actually an update to the 330 America that Ferrari only built in 1963. It was also replacing the 250 GTE 2 plus two, but it was a larger and sportier car. Production of the 330 only lasted until 1967 with 1,999 examples built. I already mentioned the four headlights in the front being different from the Series 1 cars, but there's a couple other alterations they made. So the louvers on the side on the Series 1 car were 11 louvers, and they changed them for the Series 2 car to the same three configuration louver that you have on like the 250 GTEs. Another change they made is the wheels. So before they were Baranis, whereas now they're the 10 hole cast alloy and Baranis were still an option on these cars but the alloy wheels they thought gave it a sportier look so that was what came standard and then over in the back there's a whole set of tools that comes with the car and unlike more modern Ferraris there's not a lever in the front you just press the button and it'll open up and then you have your entire tool roll in the back with all the tools you could need to work on the car on the fly if anything happens to go wrong. So you have a massive set of tools and the books come with this car as well. Uh, and the thing I always find interesting about these older cars, so the jack kit right here. So here's the jack and you don't have it up under the car and like position it somewhere. There's already jack points built into the car so you come around to the side and there's holes on either side of the car front and back just in case a tire goes flat and so you go down and the jack point is right down there and you put the jack in there i'm not going to do it but you put the jack in the hole and twist it up and that's how you jack up your car so it comes with everything you could need and i highly doubt these are ever used anymore but it's really cool to still have with the car in my opinion the 330 gt the 2 plus 2 is pretty much everything you can ask for out of an older classic ferrari it's fast it's comfortable the 2 plus 2 so two seats plus two seats the back seats are actually usable for an average sized human, uh, whereas some other models, it's kind of a joke. The back seats are glorified luggage seats. Like that's pretty much it. But this car, you have real back seats and an entire trunk to put all your luggage. So it's a real touring car that you can get in and drive with a bunch of friends. Uh, and just the sound of the car is something that just, I mean, it puts a smile on my face whenever I get to drive one of these older cars. And a fun little fact, so all of the 330s, uh, the serial numbers were odd numbers. So this one is one of the last built, so it was 10043. And all of these cars, all the 2 plus 2s, the 332 plus 2s will have an end number that's an odd number. So uh, it doesn't make a difference in anything. I just think it's a fun little fact. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please stay tuned, subscribe to our channel, and we got a lot more content coming very soon.